This is a great example of this process. So this panel is 42 inches long, nice and straight, right? And uh, it'll stay flat. In this video, we'll dive into the wonderful world of veneering and I'll show you some tips and tricks that I've learned over the last couple of decades. If you're new to the world of veneer or maybe thinking about exploring this amazing arena, here are a couple of things you should know. The first thing you should do is unroll the bundle and that's sometimes called a flitch and then begin to tape all the individual pieces and those are usually called leaves. This will keep them from splitting or splitting worse, although that can be invisibly repaired. Yeah, check out that amazing curl or figure. And the other thing you want to do is number them to keep them in this sequential order. Yeah. So even though you tape the ends, sometimes they can split or they were already split, but no big shake. We can easily repair that. So here's a split coming in about three or four inches. I'm going to remove this tape from the end and we'll go ahead and fix that. I typically put in the glue from the back side and then we just stretch sections of tape across that, just treating it like a seam. Something interesting to note, uh, I'm going to draw two parallel lines and this line going across that will designate the, the crack in the, in the veneer. And if it's at an angle, when you pull those pieces of veneer tight, they're going to go up on top of each other, right? Conversely, if the crack is straight up and down or somewhat straight, then you can pull it tight. So just keep that in mind when you're pulling the veneer tight. Sometimes you just want to place the tape there to hold it. And sometimes you can actually draw the two pieces tightly together. Case in point, here's one that is angled. The split or crack is angled. And so I can just tuck that in place and just place the tape across that without stretching it tight. And then I can put one over the top, right? And that'll keep some of the glue from coming through the top side. And then I can put glue in that crack, put more tape and just, just to hold it in place. If I was to stretch that tight, the two adjoining pieces could try to overlap each other and that would cause problems. So there are probably a lot of ways to stitch or seam veneers together. This is what works for me. So these are some of the items that I like to have, a scrap to wipe glue on, a roller, some tape, a flashlight, a light of some sort, glue of course, and a paper towel. So these veneers, they've already been seamed. I create those quality cuts, literally glue ready seams right off a table saw and I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Okay, so with the seams looking good, the joints, we can start to tape those tight to each other. And you can see that these two pieces are a little bit curly. Uh, you can just weight them down. If they're really bad or wavy, that will have to be uh, remedied. And I'll show you that here in a little bit. But essentially, we're just taping straight across the seam and pulling that tight, right? And I used to use veneer tape. It's a special tape that you get wet. You stretch it across the seam. As it dries, it shrinks and pulls those seams or joints even tighter. But blue tape is just much more convenient. And with the pieces stretched across the seam, I add one going with the joint. And this is the top surface or the show side. Now we can flip it over. That long strip of tape on the other side, on the front side, that keeps the glue from going all the way through. Then we can hinge it over. You can see I've hinged that over. And we can add glue right into that open seam. We have plenty of glue all along the seam, we can put it back on the table. And then instead of using the paper towel to just try to wipe that away, which just makes a mess, immediately destroys that paper towel, I just wipe the excess and wipe it onto this scrap piece of uh, MDF or whatever it is. And then I can wipe the rest of that residual. You don't want any glue here because when you're laying down tape, uh, tape is basically paper and paper and glue will adhere very well. So get most of the glue off. How awesome is that? And then we just stretch tape across the seam. And I'm looking for any areas that are not, maybe there's a gap or maybe there's a little bit of a, you know, one higher than the other. Or if the areas are peaked, then we could put tape on this side. Then I check it with a low raking light to make sure everything's nice and flush. 
All right, quickly, let's do another one. So here's some maple, and I'm just laying them out, you know, maybe doing a book match. And initially, I had marked these with a pencil, but in reality, I don't like marking light-colored woods with a pencil. And here you can see I just erased that pencil line. That line can migrate into the seam, and it'll look horrible. Again, just adding glue, opening up the joint and adding glue, and then wiping off the excess, mashing it down with a roller. I love using a roller. I know some people use a, a brush, but a roller mashes everything down flat. I'm working on a Formica table. That's really important that your table is clean, flat, hard. Okay, one strip all the way across, flip it over, add the glue, <laughs> lather, rinse, repeat. This is an excellent process and your veneers will come out beautiful and tight and regardless of how many pieces that you stitch together, ultimately you'll end up with one large sheet that you can adhere to your substrate. You see those wrinkles? You can kind of see those little low spots. Got this low raking light. I probably used a little bit too much glue when I was uh, laying up these panels in the vacuum bag. And I was a little concerned, but no big shake with uh, a good sharp sc scraper. See all these shavings that it's making as I'm scraping that. It's just thousands deep, so they're not um, that deep. I mean, they're, they're coming out. So I was uh, sweating, but yeah, I have to watch how much glue I put down. That's really common with thin veneer. If you put too much glue, It'll get wrink wrinkles even under pressure, so gotta watch that. So I've used a lot of different glues for veneer. Here I'm just using regular Type Bond 1, and one thing I've noticed about Type Bond 1 is it has very little glue creep. It, it is a PVA, it's not a rigid glue, but it does really well with smaller pieces like this, and I, I don't have to worry about it. On a larger panel, I would use a rigid glue of some sort. That way you don't have any movement of the veneers which could open up seams and cause other problems. The other thing I've noticed is that different glues require slightly different amounts and so I was kind of used to the amount that I was putting with a prior project. I might have put a little bit too much glue and caused these wrinkles but they were very subtle and came out easily. Something to know if you have to use blue tape in the vacuum bag that can cause it to adhere really well and you know trying to get it loose with a knife or your fingernail, the tape tears, it gets kind of annoying. This works really well. Just use a sharp chisel. If none of this works, break out a heat gun. That'll soften the adhesive and it'll peel right up. So I'm doing some veneering. Got my bag over there. You can see it's propped open. And this is the platen that has all the grooves to allow for the air to escape, all that jazz, right? But I wanted to show you this. So this is the auxiliary platen that I call it. Um, and this goes on top of the platen with the grooves because you need something, otherwise your veneer will take the shape of those grooves. So you have this, and then I just use some easy tack to, you can see these magic marker lines where I've laid this out and I've put a piece of plastic down. And this has worked for everything that I've been doing uh, the largest piece was the size of uh, this uh, Baltic birch, and I <clears throat> should have put a piece of plastic down that big, but I, I didn't. Um, I've just been using some of this freezer paper. It's, it looks like paper on one side, but on the other side is kind of glossy, and the glue does not stick to it. It's fantastic. Of course, wax paper works pretty good, but anything to keep the, the glue from sticking, right? Clear plastic or visqueen, they call it, wax paper. And this stuff, I really like, this freezer paper. It's uh, plastic coated. Of course, if I'm doing a lot of panels that are the same size, I just go ahead and take the time to make a cowl with clear tape. You just use it over and over, right? And sometimes I'll size my panels for taped cowls that I already have made. And this is the substrate I'm using on this particular job. It's a five millimeter plywood, and I believe it's an underlayment. Uh, I got it at one of the big box stores. Uh, both Home Depot and Lowe's carried it, about 22 bucks a sheet. Five millimeter, which is, I believe, 197 thousandths, 0.197. Uh, pretty thin, and 
you can see how it's warped. Well, what I did is I used two layers and I ran a sandwich of veneer in between the two plywood plywood pieces and that veneer grain runs perpendicular to this grain. So, so once it's glued up and I used epoxy. So once that's glued up, it's very stable, very flat and should make a really fantastic substrate. And yes, I agree. It takes a lot more time. It's more work. But one of the advantages is that you can create custom size or custom thickness panels. I needed something around 7 16 by the time I was done. So these panels will get veneer on each outer face. And now I can be confident that my panels will be flat, stable, and the correct thickness. Okay, so this is my face veneer. This is the backer veneer. And something I've been doing that works fantastically well is I want a sheet of uh, some of this freezer paper to keep it from adhering to the cowl that will be on top. And so I just cut, cut a couple of windows and uh, hold this down with blue tape. Now when I grab this veneer to put it on the substrate once it has the glue on, I'm not fumbling around with another piece of paper trying to line things up. I can just grab this, put it down, put my other cowl on top, nothing's going to stick. And then this removes simply even after it's been under pressure because it's just adhered in these four little spots. So years ago, I discovered that I could get little bits of sawdust and debris trapped right where the bag closes. And this prevents a vacuum pump from shutting off, of course. And so now I use a damp cloth and I moisten everything that gets rid of the dust and creates an incredible seal. This may be well known, but I thought I would share. I need to spread some more glue and this roller is way too wet. It'll end up diluting the glue, right? So anyway, air compressor and centrifugal force. Bam. Just like that, it is dry. Not even damp. That's awesome. All right, let's glue this. Now, I like shaking my PVA glues. Actually, I like anything that's liquid. Well, not anything, but if there's several ingredients, they should be mixed, right? If you let a glue bottle sit for a long time, you'll notice that it gets like an oily film on top. Those ingredients need stirred, shaken, whatever it takes. Laying out some glue, spreading it out. And a good general rule of thumb is if your substrate has pencil marks, you should easily be able to see that through the glue. Nice, thin, consistent layer. And of course, anytime you're using a water-based glue like I'm using here, you want to apply the glue to the substrate, not the veneer, right? And here I added I might have laid down a little bit too much glue. No big shake. I'll just squeegee some of that excess glue back into the glue bottle and re-roll everything out. Also, I like having a place for my glue roller. All right, this is great. So now you'll notice that I'm not applying the veneer to the substrate. I'm laying the substrate onto the veneer. And this is the front or the back side. I'm not sure which, but it doesn't matter. I can add some more glue. Same as before. This works well because I don't have to worry about that veneer curling up when the glue hits it. The weight of the substrate will hold that bottom piece down. Spread everything out. You can see that pencil line. Still lightly shows through the glue. The veneer with the attached butcher paper. That works so well. And this would start curling immediately so I put another cowl down even though this is just eighth inch it'll hold that veneer in place I can bring the tape over the edges secure everything in place then we can slip the, everything into the bag I have the bag propped open that's really important especially in the summer when it's hot you need to move quickly you can see there it's dark outside if you look kind of through the window over there so the temperature is just about right for doing this and you'll notice that extra platen I have in the middle 
I feel like that puts a little bit extra pressure in the middle since my cowl is only eighth inch and that works well. I love these rollers. I can use them over and over. I just squeegee as much glue as I can out of the roller and then I'll roll it onto some scrap cardboard or something and then I can take it to my shop sink and, and wash it. So I'm using regular tight bond one for the veneer to the substrate. The two pieces of substrate, the five millimeter ply with the veneer in betwixt, those are getting glued with epoxy. And these are the rollers I'm using. A couple of different brands, but it's the same type. They're, it's a specialty roller designed for adhesive, basically. So it's a polyester flocking. Of course, these come in nine inch and I just slice them at the bandsaw or, or use them like that if you're doing a large panel. What I love about these is with a PVA glue, you can rinse these and use them over and over and over. So very economical. Of course, with epoxy, <laughs> no, uh, you can just toss those. Hey, good morning. So this is probably ready. I glued it last night. It didn't need to be in the bag that long, but uh, I glued it late. so. It is what it is. Now, a couple of things you'll notice. I don't know if that shows up on camera very good. See how unruly that is and wavy. Uh, if you have veneers that are, um, you know, figured or like maybe, um, like, you know, like a, a curl or even a bird's eye um, crotch veneers, they get really wavy. And if they're really bad, you'll have to flatten that before you try to get them in a in a veneer bag. I use a the super soft veneer softener, works fantastic. I have a video on this and I'll leave a link to that. You simply get those wet, put them between layers of paper, flatten them however you can, vacuum bag or with cowls until they come out flat and dry and then you can press them. Another thing I wanted to share is how fantastic something like this is. This is a heat blanket, right? It's an old heat blanket and especially when I'm using epoxy, when I was gluing the two layers of five millimeter plywood with the veneer in between that epoxy, it's a, a long cure, 24 hours. Adding a little bit of heat seems to make a big difference, uh, especially if you're using a glue like this. This is uh, a plastic resin glue and it requires, if you read the small print, it reads that it needs 70, 70 degrees or above. Then I just write that right on the lid so I don't forget. I did forget once and my glue did not cure. So yeah, heat blanket. All right, let's quit messing around and get this out of the bag. I love this part. How awesome is that? I love this stuff. Freezer paper. You can see my veneer was a little bit too long and how it just broke it over the edge. Not a big shake. I could have scrambled and cut it when I realized that I just, I cut it too long, I guess, but no big shake. This is the back side. Uh, I tend to put my face veneers down. I, it's just something I've always done. I don't know which way is better. I guess it doesn't matter if you have a good clamping cow. Beautiful, flat, wrinkle-free, stable. That's awesome. That's what you want to hear. And you can see this little bit of tape here that I used to secure this veneer. It just goes underneath this piece, maybe an eighth of an inch. That's all gonna get trimmed, right? So, yeah, man, progress. Hey, check it out. So I'm stitching these veneers together and I've already got my show pieces finished. So all the ones that show, you start with those, pick your best grain, your beautiful patterns, this and that. 
everything centered and you work from there and then pieces like this one this one in particular is the bottom actually it's underneath the bottom on the inside and it'll never show but this veneer is too narrow i need to make it a little bit wider and only by about three quarters of an inch five eighths of an inch and i have plenty of veneer where i could cut a new strip to fit on here but i like practicing with different techniques in case i ever ran into the situation where i had to make this work and case in point i have this piece of veneer but you can see it's it's plenty wide, but it's too short in length. So what I've done is I've cut a long scarf joint. Now I can extend this out like that where it's long enough. I can stitch this together and then slice it straight and connect it to this piece. And then I'll gain that length and it's going to look beautiful. So let me do that and I'll show you how that comes out. All right, so here you can see I've stitched the veneers together or pulled them tight with tape, pretty standard, right? And then I can fold that over the corner of a table and add some glue. Once it's dry, I cut it straight on both edges and bam, look at that. Beautiful and practically invisible. Of course, from there, I can stitch it to the main piece in the same way. And here I'm just checking for flushness with a low raking light. All right, <clears throat> it's been about 30 minutes. Let's see how we did. Your camera's in the way. <laughs> of course, I wouldn't sand it at this stage. This would get applied to a substrate and then sanded, but I just wanted to show you. So that's the backside. There's a joint going right across there. Like I said, this, this won't even show, but that's uh, one way to uh, stretch your veneer, right? <laughs> the original board stretcher. Now this technique can be done with solid wood as well. If you have a board that's wide enough, but not long enough, you just create a scarf joint to create that length. So using a vacuum bag is pretty straightforward. And even if you're using cowls and clamps, ultimately you want good adhesion and nice flat panels, right? And this sound, is testament to that. So once your panels come out of the bag, you want to let them set on edge somewhere so they can get air on both sides and this will keep them nice and flat as they cure. Even though the substrate to start was pretty curved. Yeah. Anyway, I hope you get some use out of this. Please remember to subscribe and thank you tons for watching.